Join us for a driver review of the Audi S8. Let's go. In the front you can see the huge Audi single frame grille, the S8 then with the sporty badge, stronger contrasting lower area. This is here the chrome contrast to the Navara blue I think it also fits better. However, you could also go for a black pack for a more sinister look. LED headlamps are standard, optional, the matrix LED with laser light function which is also equipped with this vehicle. The length is either at 5 meters 18, 17 foot or 204 inches short wheelbase or the long wheelbase version which is standard for the US 5 meter 30, 17 foot 4 or 209 inches. Here we have a European model with a short wheelbase. You can see that the rear door is not that long actually. Then the wheels would come 21 inch as standard in the US but here we have the 20 inch with winner tire still. Look at these color nuances right there and interesting design lines here above the door handle. Here it's actually inside the door handle but then two more are forming right there for some stronger shoulders. So a very elegant styling. This is the top luxury sedan in the sports styling but not over the top definitely. Air suspension is standard here for the S8 with the sport air setup, soon more when driving that vehicle of course. Rear axle steering is also standard for the S8 to give you even more agility at lower speeds in the smaller turning circle and turning in the same direction in the front wheels at a higher speed for more stability. The S8 with the sporty badge and with the contrast and lower part honeycomb style in a small way right here and four massive exhaust tips for this 4 liter V8 by turbo. And by the way the rear differential lock is also standard for the S8. <laughs> Here we have a 4 liter V8 bi turbo in the S8 with 571 horsepower. 3.8 seconds is the acceleration figure. And the all wheel drive distribution, a classic quattro all wheel drive, 40% in the front, 60% in the rear is a standard distribution. And maximum would be 85% in the rear and maximum also 70% in the front. So it's also a little bit varying. Then getting inside, this is really great comfort here. So the seat form itself is really awesome comfort. And when I put the seat all the way down with one with A6 or 6 with one, plenty of headroom. I usually put it up that it's a little bit more upright. I have better seating comfort than that. Screens, screens, screens. 12.3, 10.1, 8.6. But the funny thing is, although it's screened all over the place, the user interface is the best screenish interface we know. Why? It's still straightforward. These screens can also interact together a little bit. For example, if you're in a GPS and search for an address, then the lower part becomes either the keyboard here or you can, you know, like bright, like here, Berlin. Now the digital instruments, they're very clear to read, also with the sporty styling then here. Left side you can have the map, but you can also switch what you want to see. Um, like there's here also the, the nighttime view, for example. Oh, by the way, this consumption here, this was with high speed driving, like uh, 
to fast driving. Zoom more to the normal consumption while driving, of course, or the minimum. Here, map all over the place is also possible. So, yeah, one of my favorite virtual instruments. Top screen then, I think a very straightforward, normal main menu. And on the left side, you can also have this as a hotkey. So, for example, when you are in the GPS, with the great satellite view, the CPU power is also way than enough here so they do not have a problem with the laggy infotainment system lower area usually i say i want hard buttons for the climate menu and that's still true however for a touchscreen ac unit it's the best you know it's the best buttonless unit i think because you can still straightforward reach either with this sliding um or putting plus minus it's still easy to use while driving. Audi drive select is below here, by the way. Um, well, you usually leave it in the auto mode, but then you can also switch to the dynamic mode right there. And it was always also possible when you leave it in the auto driving mode, but just pull back the shifting lever, you're in the S shifting mode, you also have more boost. If you consider the length of the vehicle and then see how much legroom you have here when you are driving as a tall driver, this is of course more than enough legroom. But considering the exterior length, the package on the interior is not that good. The seats are, of course, very, like, you know, voluminous. So the packaging is not the best, but that's a problem of the segment in general. Headroom, then here with 1.6, 6.1, one, no problem, enough space. And, of course, a very cozy setup. You can get different luxury setups here, um, also with electric rear seats, that's all possible. Now to the trunk. Here we go, electric hatch. Nice build quality here as, as well. Then the lower part, you can lift up. Some more equipment. Side storage. Not too high, of course, typical sedan style. What's interesting here, there is this ski hatch available. You have to go around and then open it from here. There we go. And then the measurements. But first of all, when I put a backpack in here that you see that easily fits also height-wise, no problem. Then, normal length of the trunk. This is here, this is a meter. So first of all, better the width. So this is a meter or 40 inches right here, a little bit more narrow towards this area. And the normal length here is also a little bit under a meter or 40 inches. But then we have this step in the trunk. And if you go above the step, this is then 46 inches or one meter 17. And last but not least, the height here at 21 inches or 53 centimeters. Now here in dynamic mode, we are at 60 kilometers an hour. Let's go. And now we are at 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour incredible noise installation and it's such a smooth experience the only thing you maybe realize at, uh, at the get-go the car took a while to shift down first with the kick down it's just that it's even when you're in sport mode it's putting higher gears to keep the consumption rather low um, so s shifting mode and dynamic mode the sport is experience you can always boost it yourself with shifting down yourself with the great shifting pedals i mean I'm here at 150 kilometers an hour, and now I shift back twice. And 200 again. So you've seen I went from seventh to fifth gear, and then you have the absolute super flawless acceleration, because when you shift down yourself first, you immediately have the right uh, RPM set, so that's making this car then even quicker. However, in a you know mixed average, you can score something 10 and a half liters in one kilometers. So yeah, that's a little bit more than 20 mpg US and a little bit less than 30 mpg UK. Considering the size and the power of this vehicle, it's still somewhat okay. It's absolutely astonishing how well this car sits on the road air suspension is standard in the dynamic mode here it is stiffer and also lower the air suspension can change the level 
and in the dynamic mode it just goes lower to give you more contact to the road. Set the cruise control, you can set it to 130 km an hour, which is the current speed. There's also traffic sign recognition, so when the speed is changing, the car will also adapt to that. That's really flawlessly done. Even in advance, this is called so-called predictive assistant for more efficiency in the highest, uh, you know, highest build of the assistant systems packages. And then the car will decrease the speed in advance to be more efficient. And when you are not using the cruise control, you will still get info of that. There will be like a you know lift your foot symbol in the help display and you also feel with the like two like the, the two the vibrations in the throttle pedal and that is then signalizing Thomas lift your foot off the throttle if you want to be more efficient and you know efficiency in Germans that's our thing you know blind spot monitor here appearing really cool and so helpful to have this one integrated in the mirrors and then it's also flashing right there when you set the turning indicator. Since you have this rear axle steering, it feels more compact than it is. We started the driving part with the, you know, with the rear axle steering and that really fakes a shorter wheelbase. It feels like it would have a shorter wheelbase and it drives then like this at slower speeds. The rear axle or the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction than the front wheels and at higher speeds here they turn in the same direction to give you more stability and I can just stress again the rear axle steering is for long wheelbase vehicles one of the coolest technology highlights you can have it's really awesome and I would always go for that gladly it's standard here with the S8 And now to our conclusion for today with the Audi S8. Meanwhile, it's quite chilly and dark outside. And I really hope you enjoyed our nighttime motorway experience, German Autobahn. Well, exterior, I think really elegant and sporty at the same time. Not overdone, exactly right on point. If you think about the siblings, A6, A7, A8. My design favorite is of course the A7 because of this really striking fastback design. And that's also one of my key points for today. It has been such a great ride, but if you want a little bit cheaper, not cheap in general, but cheaper than the A8 or S8, you can also go for the A6 or for the A7 and have a similar great luxury driving experience in the front. The 8, A8, S8, Really, if you also want that chauffeur-like experience in the rear, if you need more or want more space in the rear, if you also want to be driven at some point, maybe drive this car yourself for a pleasure ride at some point, but another day you have to work or something or f use the phone while driving or something and want to concentrate on that and then be driven, then the A8 or the S8 would be the choice for you. Interior is a superb build quality. A digital user interface but still a uh, one that is very well to use one thing that is missing if you want such a great vehicle but want it more sustainable and want it more animal friendly we also need animal skin alternatives for this segment here but Audi is now finally working on that too overall one of the best motorway or autobahn cars there is has been a, such a great ride so super comfortable and sporty at the very same time. Impressive vehicle and, said earlier, when you put it to cruise control at a reasonable speed on the motorway, this 4-liter V8 is also indeed quite efficient. Also possible, you know, the consumption figures we scored on the motorway, so some nine liters minimum on one kilometers is actually possible. So that's in the very well in the 30 MPG regions. Of course, if you floor it out a little bit more than more towards 11 liters on one kilometers, which is then more like in the 20 mg regions. So, thank you so much for tuning in today. Leave us your comments. Also, tune in to some relevant reviews. We'll also link other interesting reviews in the video description. So, let's say see you there or at our very next review.